Welcome to A Stride Above Podcast, where our commitment to excellence in equine health and athletic performance unites us. Join your host, Dr. Alberto Rolan, as we trot through the essential topics that matter most to you and your equine family members. With over 15 years of experience in equine sports medicine and rehabilitation, Dr. Rulan is dedicated to navigating you through the latest innovations and essential insights in horse health. Together, we'll ensure that you and your horses always remain astride above the rest. And we are back, astride above. Welcome to our new episode one. Amanda asked me today to talk about the hyperbaric oxygen chamber and how it can help bleeders. Well, we're going to talk about bleeders because it's, it's February, right? And February is our love month, red, blood, etc. So we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about blood. We're going to talk about bleeders. Bleeders are a very hot topic lately. In the racehorse industry, for example, they are taking LASIKs away in many races, many stakes races, which are very important races are not letting horses use Lasix anymore. And in the butter racing industry, the bleeders seems to be really, really being a more problematic thing. But before I keep talking, let's define what a bleeder is, right? A bleeder is when you are pushing that horse or when the horse is pushing itself and it's racing, but the heart is pumping so much blood that the blood actually crosses into the lungs and that blood comes through the trachea into the nose and that's what we call bleeders the right name for it is equine exercise induced pulmonary hemorrhage e-i-p-h exercise induced pulmonary hemorrhage or i like to call it equine exercise induced pulmonary hemorrhage right because it happens in horses most commonly in horses did you know that it actually can happen in people as well yeah it could happen in people why does, why does bleeder occur? Well, there are many theories. One theory is that the heart is way too powerful for the lungs. That's one theory. The other theory is that there could be a low-grade infection in the lungs. Another theory is that there could be some weakness in the respiratory system that could create this, or that there are other secondary conditions. So. Let's tackle, let's tackle what are the possible treatments for Lasix. First, for, excuse me, let's tackle the, the treatments for bleeders right now. The mostly used one is Lasix. What, is La what does Lasix do? If any of you have taken Lasix, what it does is dehydrates the animal for a short period of time, right? Eliminates water. By eliminating water, then there is not enough volume in the whole circulatory system to spill over to come through the lungs, to come into the trachea and come out of the nose. Or sometimes don't come out of the nose, they stay into the trachea, right? But there's there's this bleeding effect. Now, of course, this is one of the reasons the LASIK has been um, fought so much because it actually dehydrates the horse. And in over usage of it might not be good for the horse because sometimes as horse people, we think that if a little bit is better, a, a lot is even better. And that's one of the problems that's happening with Lasix that a lot of people are actually abusing it. It's not a bad drug. It's just that it gets abused and overused. For example, I remember back home where some horses get 10 cc's of Lasix and the common dose is about three cc's, right? So a horse can get extremely dehydrated and can suffer. And some horses could actually go into some sort of, some sort of stroke or something. So that is the most common drug. It's approved for LASIK, it's approved for bleeders, and everybody knows about it. Now what happens is that we are removing it from the industry in the racehorses, and people are looking for other options. In addition to that, there is a new theory that natural treatments are better, which actually I tend to agree with it. There are other treatments that are that are not drugs. Now, one of the examples is the equine hyperbaric chamber. By the way, you could go to the to our website, equinehyperbetic.com, www.equinehyperbetic.com, and learn and see our cases and learn about this. So the hyperbetic oxygen hyperbetic chamber is a great treatment for bleeders because one, improves the healing of the lungs. Two, there's a theory that there are some low-grade infections in the lungs, which the hyperbetic treats 
very well, right? Three, the, it is proven that the hyperbaric oxygen chamber releases stem cells from the bone marrow into the bloodstream 100%. So if there's any damage in the lungs, this is going to increase the healing of the lungs. On top of that, and this is 100% unpublished research, what I'm about to tell you, we have been doing some really cool studies with shockwave in the lungs, in addition to the hyperbaric, some stem cells, some amnion, and other regenerative treatments to get this bleeder situation under control. And we're having, we're having really good results. So if you wanna learn more about how the hyperbaric oxygen chamber can help bleeders, remember www.equinehyperbaric.com. So back to the bleeder. So you have a horse races, whether it's a battle race, whether it's a thoroughbred, starts bleeding up the nose because the lungs are pushing way too much blood. The first thing that we do is stop this horse. If we suspect that the horse bled, but we don't see no uh, blood coming out of the nose, we actually need to scope the horse. We perform an upper airway endoscopy and see if the, there's blood in the trachea. So we diagnose the horse as a bleeder, done. Now we probably need to stop that horse, right? Because there's a lot of blood sitting in the lungs and that could create an infection. Very important, stop the horse, call the veterinarian, the veterinarian might or might not prescribe antibiotics. If you're watching this episode, ask the veterinarian about the hyperbaric oxygen chamber. They might not know about it. So they might have to do a little bit of research and you direct them to us or to equinehyperbaric.com. And then after a period of rest, the horse gets the treatment, whether it's any of the treatments that I'm telling you, and the horse goes back to work. Now, this horse now is a bleeder right? We know it's a bleeder. We actually can and should test whether the horse is going to bleed again. And I do recommend using some Lasix. I just don't recommend abusing the Lasix, but I still recommend using some low, um, low volume of Lasix, whether it's two cc's, three cc's, because it actually helps. Just make sure that after the horse exercises the next time on Lasix, gets plenty of water. That's it. There are some there are some thoughts that if you use Lasix every week continuously or many many times in a row, it might deplete iron, I R O N. So you might have to supplement your horses with iron. Just talk to your vet about it. Does that make sense? Good. So in summary, so we wrap it up for you. Bleeders is called exercise induced pulmonary hemorrhage. The heart is pumping way too much blood that the lungs cannot handle the volume. Then blood spills over into the trachea, comes out of the nose. If it doesn't come out of the nose, that doesn't mean it's not a bleeder because it could be in the trachea. We diagnose that with a scope. If your horse is a bleeder, we stop the horse, call the veterinarian and get it on treatment. Treatment includes hyperbaric oxygen chamber. Experimental treatments include shockwave, stem cells, amnion therapy, alpha-2 inhaler, other herbal products, and more. But the important thing is you get your horse treated. Then after that, start exercising the horse again. You might need to continue to use Lasix if, you are, if your race or your regulatory agency allows you to use Lasix. And then after that, enjoy your horse. And that is my recommendation for treating bleeders, exercise-induced pulmonary hemorrhage. Thank you very much. Welcome back to Stride Above. I hope you have a great day. Follow us and I will have tons of great tips for you.